All right. Uh, we have uh, quite a few new members hopping on right now, too. So I uh, want to make sure everybody gets to know everybody as uh, we wait for a couple people to join. Um, go ahead and uh, put where you're where you're from. If you're from Alabama or Missouri or somewhere somewhere else, we can all say hi and get to know one another. And we'll get started in just uh, about 30 seconds. Howdy, Arts. Idaho. I was just in Idaho. Man, that is a uh, that is a beautiful, beautiful state. That is uh, that is probably my most favorite beautiful state that doesn't have a beach. <laughs> uh, we got Sophia from New York. Another one from New York, Long Island. I was just in Long Island last week too. Uh, went to New York on Monday and Idaho at the end of the week. I was uh, traveling around. Yeah, uh, I was in um, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, which is just gorgeous. If you ever need like mountain lake place to go, it doesn't matter what uh, season it is. It is absolutely beautiful. Uh, we got Raleigh, North Carolina. We got Louisiana. La Lafitte. I'm not sure that that's how you pronounce it. All righty. Um, so let's get started. Uh, before I share my slides and we get into everything, um, I'll go ahead and actually do that. Let me share slides because I will forget. Um, all righty. So um, a little bit of housekeeping uh, for everybody. Uh, this is not meant to be a lecture. Um, I'm just not up here, you know, I kind of am talking to myself in my own room here, but uh, I like interaction. So feel free to post questions. You can post them in the chat. There is a Q&A. So if you have a specific question, um, like you want me to answer, put that in the Q&A. That way it'll be easier for me to, um, you know, know which ones have been you know, asked and answered and those kinds of things. Um, but yes, feel free. And you can even unmute yourself. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I have like a, you know, 10 sentence question, we can always unmute you. And, um, uh, you know, you can ask your question live. So uh, I want to respect everybody's time. This is a lot of content, but I will go through it uh, quickly and we will try to wrap this up in an hour. If anybody needs to jump, jump off, something happens, we are recording this. We will send out the recording to you uh, tomorrow. And uh, so that way, if you want to share it or rewatch it, uh, you will be able to do that. So, um, all right, I got my chat up, I got my questions up. Let's get started. So welcome. Um, I know most of you on here, but just in case someone of you does don't know me, I am Dr. Lisa Faust, and I am the founder and CEO of Diversify RX. And just a couple of reminders. So if you're watching this live, you get to ask questions. You get to talk to me, which usually uh, just my, our inner circle members, you know, really get one-on-one -on -one interaction with me. But now is the time for you to ask me questions. And even if it has nothing to do with cash flow, I am happy to answer any and all questions. But if you're watching this later, you come up with a question later, please use our community chat. So you can ask any question inside there. If you have something a little more private, then you can send us a private message through the contact us link. And that is available inside the membership in that top menu um, that's always there. So I highly recommend you join our office hours Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Central. Uh, we have, that is where I am live. It's usually me, unless I happen to be in an airplane or something. Um, but it's, uh, usually me where you can ask us anything. And those are, those are some really great calls. Um, I know many of our members say that, you know, those office hours are, are worth the price of admission all by themselves. Um, our, what our website, just in case you forget, like how to log on membership.diversifyrx. And I highly recommend also you getting your employees engaged. Um, I know as a business owner and a pharmacy owner myself, your time is limited. And uh, if you learn something and then you have to turn around and like teach it to somebody else, that can be kind of the uh, linchpin that, uh, that really strangles the whole process. So obviously you're the one to give the direction if you're the owner or the manager, um, but let our team help your team. So get them, get them on get their logins and they can listen directly to us. They can ask questions directly. Um, they can take the courses themselves and save their progress. And so um, you all have employee logins. So uh, you can add them yourself if you want, or feel free to just email juve at assistant at diversifyrx.com in order to get those um, added because that can be a real help. 
Alrighty, I'm going to mention the summit here. So we are we are just about five weeks away from the summit. Um, so I'm excited to see everybody. It's obviously our favorite time of the year where we actually get to see everybody in person. It's March 10th and 11th in Dallas, and um, we have just some amazing speakers. Uh, you know, I don't. I still amaze myself every time. Like I pinch myself on the speakers that we get. But we really have a focus this year on implementation. Um, I always say there's no shortage of good ideas, but implementing is hard and that's where we all need help. So all of the pharmacy owners that we have talking are all talking about implementation. All of the experts that we have are really getting into like the step by step by step. I've been working with our um, speakers on uh, their presentations and whatnot. And speaking on the summit, I have a super awesome offer for all of you guys. You guys are hearing this first. So this will go out to the rest of the membership. Um, However, you all are hearing it first um, with this being the cash flow webinar. Kind of wanted to give you guys a little bit of a, an edge, so to speak, um, to help you with that cash flow. And so we have a big announcement regarding the summit and our premier partners. So Real Value Products. If you're not familiar with Real Value Products, they're one of my favorite secondary wholesalers. Um, they carry thousands of SKUs. They carry controls. I know that's a lot of things that people are looking for. They carry a bunch of controls. They have great payment terms, but their offer to you. So I've been chatting a lot with them uh, and they were actually just in DC, um, Fred and their leadership team talking with some, some Medicare and some billing stuff. Like they're, they're, you know, they're really trying to keep their pulse on, you know, the industry. And I've been chatting with them and talking about all the just God awful stories I've been hearing in January about the reimbursements. I've been sharing like what I've been seeing. And so um, Fred being the generous guy that he is says, I want to help your members. So um, they are offering up 30 free tickets to the summit. And this is just being launched to our members. So if you want a free ticket to the summit, now this is an additional attendee ticket. So it's good for new tickets only. You can send an email to Juve at assistant at diversifyrx.com. Just email him the name and email of your attendee. That's it. Um, we do want to do one per member. That way as many, we can spread it around as many as possible. Um, limited to the first 30. So again, like you guys, you guys hear this first. Um, and then please only take a free ticket if you're actually going to be able to be there in Dallas. I would hate, you know, for someone to take a free ticket and it doesn't work out. And if, and if you do get the free ticket and then something happens, let us know so that we can offer it up maybe to somebody else. So, um, but yeah, real value is just, they're awesome. And Fred just offered this up. And, um, so I wanted to share it with you, uh, this being the cash flow webinar. So you might be able to get to the summit, but saving a little bit of cash by using one of these free tickets. So anyways, Let's get into the content. Cash flow is king. Now, it's always been king, but it is even more so right now in 2024 with the DIR fee apocalypse. Not just the DIR fee apocalypse, but I don't know if any of you guys have seen what I'm seeing in my pharmacies, which is a, just some regular plans, it seems, have just drastically reduced reimbursements as well. Um, kind of, you know, the jury's still out. Is that something that's going to remain or, or what that's like? But um, overall, revenues are down so far in 2024. And for some of you that weren't really tracking DIR fees, this has been shocking. And so protecting your cash flow and your cash flow is how you pay your bills and how you do all those things. So I really want to talk about like, what is cash flow? I want everybody to understand like what it is that we're talking about. Um, so cash Cash flow is really the ebb and flow of money in and out of your pharmacy. It's kind of like the ocean water. Sometimes the tide comes up, sometimes the tide goes back, but the same amount of water, you know, is there, but it all depends like what's there at that moment, right? Is the tide up? Is your bank account up or is the bank account down and, ca and cash is flowing out? And so it's the difference. I always like to explain it as the difference between what you collect and what you have to pay out. Um, it's the real dollars um, in your business. And it's based on timing. So if I sell a drug today for a hundred dollars, a patient says, yes, I'm getting that. So I dispense it. I buy the bottle. Let's say I buy the bottle today and it was $80. They come in and they pick it up today and they pay me a hundred dollars. Then I'm positive $20 cash flow. But if they don't pick it up today and it's just sitting on my shelf, then I'm out. I'm negative $80. The profit is still there. The profit is still $20, but I don't have the cash. So cash is all about timing of when you have to pay things and when you collect your money. So what cash flow is not, it is not profit. 
Um, profit I, is like this theoretical number that happens on financials is the way I like to look at it. And cash was the cold, hard cash that it can actually pay bills with. So um, now profit and cash are certainly interrelated. And we'll talk about that. But it also is not something you should ignore. For many, many years, we've been able to get away with not paying much attention to cash flow because there was enough profit. And the extra profit kind of made up for poor cash flow. Well, that profit has been dwindling, as you all know. It seems like every year it just gets a little, little more razor thin and a little more razor thin. And so we've gotten to the point that cash flow is now the utmost importance for pharmacy owners. If pharmacy owners sell or close their pharmacy, it's because of cash flow. It's because they don't have enough money to pay their bills. And, and that's really why it is so, so important. So what is kind of that relationship between profit and cash flow. So you can have profit and you can have no cash flow. Um, that's like you sell a bunch of drugs, but you never collect any money. Nobody, you know, somebody doesn't send you the payment. Um, you, you're showing a whole bunch of profit, but you don't have any cash flow. You can also have cash flow and no profit. You can sell a bunch of things and people pay you very quickly, but you didn't make any profit. And so you can have one without the other. Now, ideally, you want high of both. You want high profit and you want strong cash flow. That's that's what we're going for here. That's what I do inside the membership. That's all of what our courses are for. Like that's everything that I'm going for is trying to create that high profit and strong cash flow. And you get that, at least in my opinion, through diversified revenue streams and you deploy varying financial tactics. And so we're going to be talking about some of those financial tactics um, in this webinar uh, today. I always like to refer like profit is water and cash flow is oxygen to your pharmacy. You must have both. You can't live without either one. However, you will die quicker without oxygen. So we have to protect the cash flow first, then we can work on the profit. You fix the cash flow, you get a little bit of breathing room, you get a little bit of relief, and then you can go do the hard work on increasing profitability. So um, generally speaking, you can do some quick things to fix cash flow quickly. Um, there's other things that will take longer. We'll, we'll even address some of those. And profit, you know, there's always some things you can do to quickly improve profit, but a lot of things take a little longer. So you've always got to do like a double pronged approach to where you capture those quick wins, those quick things that give you a little breathing room that allow you to work on some of the deeper things that take a little bit longer. All right, let's dive into the seven tips to help you improve your cash flow. All right. Now, I am presenting these in no particular order. Not every single one is going to help every single one of you. You all have vastly different businesses and um, you don't need to do all of them. All right. You can implement as few or as many you need in order to get the cash flow that you are aiming for. So it's not that idea number one is better than idea number seven. OK, these are just different ways to look at cash flow and how you can influence it. All right. So let's get started. Number one is decrease your inventory. I always like to say a fat inventory equals a skinny wallet. Your inventory is the largest black hole for your cash. And one of the best ways you can think about it is every single bottle sitting on your shelf is a little stack of cash. And some of those bottles are bigger stacks of cash and some of those bottles are smaller stacks of cash, but they're all cash because you all decided to trade cash for inventory. So if you have too much inventory, that means the cash is not in your bank account where you can use it to pay bills. Um, you can't pay bills with pills, or at least I don't recommend it. That'll get you in trouble with some other uh, three-letter uh, uh, agencies there. So how can we decrease inventory? Number one is reduce your purchases. Um, make sure you put in, we'll talk about putting in some limits. You can return overstock. You can get rid of dead inventory and convert some of that dead inventory back into cash. So we have a full course on inventory management. I highly recommend if you're kind of the on-site manager, you know, leading the way of your pharmacy, then you take that course. If you have a technician or somebody that you can kind of delegate this to, this is perfect for your staff. I really take everyone through step by step by step. We give you all the papers. We give you all the forms to try to make it as easy as possible. So go through that course for a full step by step process on really managing and decreasing your inventory. I'll give you some some quick tips here um, to easily and kind of painlessly decrease your inventory. Always make sure you order less 
than what your cost of goods sold was for the day. So um, depending on your PMS system, but I think most of them kind of have like a one button, you can push a one button, you know, put up, push F2 or F3 and you get kind of your daily numbers. So you see like how many prescriptions you filled, how many new, how many are sold or refilled. And then it'll tell you your cost of goods sold. So if you filled 200 prescriptions and your cost of goods was 7,000, if that night you send your order and your order is only 6,000, you technically just decreased your inventory by a thousand. But if you send your order and your order is 9,000, well, then you increase your inventory by 2,000. So a really great way to kind of slowly decrease your inventory is to always make sure that you order less than whatever your cost of goods that you dispense that day. So um, I also highly recommend checking out Data Rhythm. Um, I use that in my pharmacies to kind of help manage inventory. It's very helpful, especially if you're not on site. So I am not on site on any of my pharmacies. So this, the reporting really helps my employees know, you know, what's overstock, what do they need to, to move and how much of that like fat inventory that we have. So I highly recommend them if you're looking for like a system that actually manages your live inventory on a daily, daily basis. All right, so KPI tracking, you're not going to get away from a conversation with me without talking about KPIs. I absolutely love KPIs. So inventory turns is the KPI for inventory. So where do you want that to be? Minimum 24 turns. Um, just a few years ago, not that long ago, the minimum was like 12 and you were good. That is just those eras are gone. <laughs> you need a minimum of 24 just to be able to that that cash flow because that inventory sitting on your shelf is just excess cash sitting there. So you want a minimum of 24. Ideally, you want to even push it into your 30s. Now, how can you do that? Obviously, inventory management, more synchronization so you can order just in time. You know when orders are coming in because you want to have the right order. You don't want it to affect your uh, patient uh, service by all means. So you want to have the right inventory at the right time. And there's definitely some things you can do that in order to make that happen. So um, again, reduce that daily um, order limit below your cost of goods. And you can also sell excess inventory that's not returnable through um, to your wholesaler. So if you've had the bottle for too long, or maybe there's label damage on there, uh, maybe you accidentally, you know, marked it with the you know, it's open and you marked it with a big O X, you know, you can't return those, but match RX um, for most states, you can sell it, you can sell it on match RX. And so that can be a great way to decrease your inventory. And again, turn some of that dead inventory into cash. So here's the, here's the equation. I'm not going to go deep into the equation, um, but this is something that you can hand to your bookkeeper or your accountant. Obviously they should know how to do this. Uh, but just want you to know that there is an equation behind this and what you are going for. And, um, our coach, uh, Mike, um, our team, we can help you with this as well. So don't be afraid to ask. All right. Just going to check the chat. Nope. I don't see any questions in there. All right. So longer payment terms, longer payment terms are the secret to improving your cash flow because again, cash flow is all about timing. So if I get to hold on my cash longer before I have to let it go, then that, that Im improves the cash flow to me. So longer payment terms is an absolute must. So how do you get longer payment terms? Some companies will just let you change your payment date, um, whether it's your utility bill, or your phone bill, or you know whenever you pay your vial company, just ask to push out the date. If something's normally due on the 10th, say, hey, can we have that due on the 25th? And some companies will let you do that. Some won't, but it'll always be no unless you ask. So always, always talk about and always call your bill companies and see if you can just push out that billing date. If you're having cash flow struggles, do not pay early and maximize your grace periods. So for many companies, you might have something that's due on the 5th, but it's not late until the 25th. So you have a 20-day grace period. So if you have a 20-day grace period and you're struggling with cash flow, you don't really need to pay it by the 5th. You really have to pay it by the 25th. And so you might want to start looking at that on your bills of, what grace periods are out there and how can you make sure that you're optimizing and using them? Because it may not sound like much, but trust me, again, cash flow is all about that timing. And the longer you get to hold your money, the better off your cash flow is going to be. Now, the biggest impact cash flow is your wholesaler, is your buying. That's why I am not a fan of buying most of your drugs through a primary vendor agreement. Primary vendor agreements not only overcharge you, they charge you more for drugs up front, but they also make you pay every week or every two weeks or twice a month. 
which kills your cash flow. But if you switch to somebody like Real Value Products, who I mentioned earlier, who is sponsoring the uh, the 30 free tickets, or Rx Cherry Pick is another favorite of mine. Not only do you get a significant boost to cash flow because of profit, because you're paying less for your drugs, but the main impact is cash flow because they have 30 or 45 day payment cycles, which honestly is life changing. It is like hundreds of thousands of dollars life changing. You really start to understand how much the primary wholesaler is really kind of keeping your money by having those short payment terms and switching from a 15 payment term to a 30 or 45 is is literally just life changing for a pharmacy owner. Um, within a matter of weeks, you can have a hundred grand built up in your account just from cash flow because again, it's all about the timing. And so primary vendor agreements tend to hold on to your cash. They actually make their money from basically operating as a bank um, at, rather than uh, giving your money and letting you have it. So if you're really struggling with cash flow, that is the number one thing you can do. Um, hop on office hour calls or listen to or some of our past recordings. You can all of our office hours are on PBU radio, which is our private podcast. Um, and that's only for members. So you can listen to there. We talk about it extensively. I'm happy to talk about it every week if needed. So we can always dive into like kind of how that works, but seriously, this will fix your cash flow problems. Um, if you kind of have that typical primary vendor agreement. All right. Restructure debt. Not everybody has debt, but if you have debt, it might be time to restructure it. Now, you know, basically restructuring is just refinancing your debt. It can be, it can mean consolidating. Um, it can mean re-amortizing. It can mean a lot of different things, but it's just restructuring your debt in order to have lower monthly payments. And a lot of times when I mention this, people say, but wait, aren't insurance rates higher? Like, yes, they're higher than historic lows. They're still pretty low compared to what, you know, typically um, has been available. And when you're struggling with cash flow, the interest rate doesn't matter. I mean, it does, but it's the payment amount. You want the lower payment amount, at least the lower minimum payment. So you have a little bit more breathing room in your cash flow. You can always pay things down early or, you know, restructure later when interest rates fall. But being able to reconsolidate or re-amortizing a loan, um, you know, can sometimes cut payments by 50 or 75 percent. Um, that that is a good option for some people. So when you are looking at restructuring debt, if you have some debt with some really high payments, um, you know, banks never like giving money to people who need it um, because then, you know, then you're not, then you're a credit risk. So if you don't need the money right now, that might actually be the best time to talk to your bank. So talk to banks and lenders before you're in a dire state, um, which, you know, might be past that point. But if you're not at that point yet, this might be something that you talk to a bank about um, in terms of restructuring any debt that you have. Um, number four, reduce expenses. Absolutely. A dollar save is a dollar earned. If you save a dollar in expenses, that dollar goes right to your bottom line. And so controlling and optimizing your expenses is definitely a part of improving your cash flow. Um, so your major sucks of expenses is payroll. Payroll's usually everybody's number one. Um, so you want to make sure your payroll is under control. And what does that mean? So green is like it's, you know, your OK is getting it to less than 13%. So that means if you, for every $100,000 in revenue, you have less than $13,000 of payroll expenses. Now, if you want to get to badass level, if you want to be like, hey, I'm at the cream of the crop, I am really managing my expenses well, your payroll should be less than 11. So I always tell people like, what's good? Good is less than 13. What's better is less than 11. Typically in my pharmacies, we tend to run at about nine and a half is, is where we're at. So it's definitely doable. And it's doable without you, you know, putting in a ton of free labor. Um, now it's it's a math problem, and we'll go into the math a little bit later. Uh, you know, so you either increase your revenue or you decrease the payroll costs. It's it's really it's either or, and that's how you you kind of manipulate that number. Now your expense ratio, so all your expenses, so payroll plus your rent, plus your utilities, you know, plus your carpet cleaning, you know, all the other things, your operational expenses. Ideally, you want to keep that to less than nineteen percent. Um, and both of these lower is better. So a lower, lower the number is generally going to be better for your cash flow. So how can you, you know, keep expenses down? Negotiate prices. Uh, you know, if you have a company that's like, hey, we're raising our prices, say, hey, what if I do a double order? Can I get the older prices? What, you know, what if I, and even in the future, even if they didn't raise prices, hey, what kind of discount can you give me for ordering twice as much? 
Um, can I can I save a little bit of something? Uh, and so negotiate, ask for the discounts. The answer is always no, unless you ask. I know I'm one of those people that I always feel a little awkward asking for a discount. <laughs> I just, it's not in my nature. Whereas like my brother, he doesn't talk to anybody without asking for a discount. So I know it can feel a little awkward. I'm with you. Um, but it can result in hundreds, if not thousands of dollars of savings. And so it really is important that you do it. So um, and then another thing you I recommend is get a detailed PL, so a profit and loss um, report or an income statement, and review every expense. Okay. Um, you want to review every expense and you kind of want to ask yourself these questions. Is this expense necessary? If you're really struggling, then maybe sponsoring that you know, football team or that soccer team is just not in the cards right now. And I know it's really hard to say no to people like that, but you kind of, you have to put yourself first at some point. You have to put your business and your patients at first. So is that expense really and truly necessary? Is it making me money? Some expenses make you money. You have to buy vials. <laughs> you can't dispense prescriptions unless you buy vials. So it's, it might be necessary, um, you know, and I'm getting it at the, at the best price. So while vials might be necessary, am I getting them at the best absolute cost? Um, maybe there's a company that when you first call them, their price per box is more expensive. But if you say, hey, I'll buy 10 boxes, all of a sudden they can negotiate lower. So can that expense be reduced or eliminated or put on hold? All right. And then quick tip, involve your employees in cost saving. Talk to your employees and get them to have a cost reduction mindset. Um, even things that are really small and really simple, but they start to snowball. So I always like to ask owners, like, what's more expensive? And I'll ask you guys, you guys can put in the chat, um, a paper clip or a staple. Which one is more expensive? Put it in the chat there. Okay, Rashida says staple. Um, so if you're looking at the per unit cost, paper clips cost like hundreds of percentages more than a staple. So, you know, let's say you do a lot of, you know, vaccines and you put together the paper and they always, you know, put it together with the paper clip and then it, you know, gets tossed in the trash. Um, a staple is going to be much more efficient. And you're like, but Lisa, we're talking about fractions of a penny. Yes. Paper clips and staples is fractions of a penny conversation. However, that mindset rolls over to other things that are not fractions of a penny. Um, you know, if they're going to Office Depot and picking paper up um, and they buy the brand name paper as opposed to the cheap Office Depot paper, that starts to make a difference. If they're calling for chemicals for your compounding lab, um, you know, they're looking at straws. Uh, they're looking at the cost. They might buy one instead of the other. And so it's really important. They make a thousand times more decisions than you do they're on the front lines. They're doing a lot of work. There's more of them. There's only one of you. So the more you can get your employees in that mindset of saving money, the better off your business is going to be. Oops. Here was the um, math, if you will, for the payroll ratio and the expense ratio. Again, I'm not going to dive into the math today, but these are the equations um, in there. And of course, we have... Um, um, all of these courses detailed for you step by step. So our inventory course, the payroll course, and the expense ratio, those are the three critical KPIs. I will tell you the magic to a profitable cash flowing pharmacy is getting all three of those to green. If those are green, you have a profitable pharmacy. Now you have some breathing room and we can go work on the other things like diversifying revenue streams, marketing, growth, scaling, employee training. But you can't do any of that stuff until you have that strong foundation and you're not bleeding money. So we wanna make sure you're not bleeding money. So those are the three most important. So whenever you see me talk about three critical KPIs, those are the three critical KPIs. And that's what really where we want everybody to be starting. So collect more payments. If you collect more money, your cash flow is going to get better. So reconcile your third party claims. Make sure you receive everything you are supposed to be receiving. Um, a lot of people use you know some sort of service for this, or if you're contract or the PSAO they might have, but a lot of us don't really look at these reports. I have seen many pharmacies start to go underwater because maybe some local little pay payer was paying by check 
And all of a sudden, someone in their system accidentally updated the mailing address to somebody else and they hadn't received a paper check in three months. And it was an AIDS foundation and it was, you know, for all their AIDS medication. And now they're down, you know, $150,000 in three months, like things can happen. So make sure you're paying attention to your third party claims. Make sure somebody's paying attention that accounts receivable, that it's not just growing, growing, growing every single month. All right. Um, I, this one is probably the hottest topic when it comes to collect more payments. Um, consider having customers pay credit card fees. Has Does anybody on have anybody pay their credit card fees? Um, the you know like the patient or the customer, or are you still all doing it kind of traditional? You know where you're paying the credit card fee. Has anybody made that leap yet? Um, it can add up significantly. Some people have massive credit card statements, you know, and it kind of depends. If you are in a heavy medi, you know, medi medi area, and your copays, you know, for Medicaid are zero dollars or one dollar or three dollars like maybe you don't have a whole lot of credit card fees if you sell a whole bunch of high-end otc items or a bunch of um, high deductible plans where your co-pays have massive amounts of you know co-pays on them because they're going towards a deductible you can have massive amounts of credit card fees so um this is an option it may not fit for everybody's you know culture and demographic um but there are definitely there are ways there's plenty of credit card processors um, in order to do this, that will pass that fee on to your customer and you can do it for your PBM contract. I know that's a big myth out there that somehow you'll get in trouble with the PBM. The only rule for the PBM that you have to have is there has to be some way that you accept payment where there is no fee. So if you accept cash, if you accept checks, you know, they can, they can pay, you know, some other way, um, as long as you have some other way for them to pay without a fee, then then you're in the clear. Um, be more aggressive with in-house charge accounts. I know many of you still offer in-house charge accounts. Make sure you're collecting on those. Have people put a credit card on file so you can automatically bill them and you're not waiting for checks. Those kinds of things can all help with um, getting more payments. So number six is increased profits. You're like, but wait, Lisa, you said cash flow is not profit. That is correct. However, if you have more profit, it's easier to turn that profit into cash. You're more likely to uh, turn that profit into cash the more profit you have. So sell higher margin OTC items. So many times I hear pharmacies say, well, that won't sell, that won't sell, that won't sell. Your people are buying stuff and they buy stuff they want, not that they necessarily need. So if you tell somebody they need something, many times it's like, oh, well, I expect, you know, my insurance to pay for that, or I expect my Medicaid to pay for that. But if they want it, they will often pay for it. You know, so the weight loss supplements, uh, you know, supplements for sleep. In my particular pharmacy, um, we sell a bunch of Nudora, um, N-U-D-O-R-A. It's a five blend probiotic for inflammation and weight. We sell a bunch of that. We also sell a bunch of uh, approved medical solutions, nitric oxide. Um, we live in a blue collar town. We have a lot of laborers in our town and that nitric oxide like boosts their energy. They don't feel tired. They don't feel fatigued. They come back and get that stuff every single month. So figure out what, what will sell because something will sell. I guarantee you people are always buying stuff, but they buy stuff they want, not what they necessarily need. You can also increase cash-based clinical revenue, consult, point of care testing, PGX testing. Um, again, you know, not everything's gonna work for everybody, but this will work for a lot of people. Everybody has businesses around them. Everybody has executives around them. Even if that's not currently who's coming to your pharmacy, you can start to target those people that might have a little bit more of that disposable income. One of my favorite ways to increase profit in a pharmacy is direct billing workers comp. Um, I use StreamCare. Um, there are there are several different companies out there, um, but direct billing workers comp will just skyrocket your workers comp. So many pharmacies run away from workers comp because let's face it, Temesis and My Matrix they all suck. Um, they pay you pennies on the dollar, uh, but you can in most states you have the right to direct bill the insurer, which is where you get the full reimbursement instead of you know My Matrix getting it. So direct billing workers comp is probably one of my favorite ways to increase profit. It's one of the first things that we do whenever I take over a pharmacy. Um, don't forget about some higher margin prescriptions. Um, I don't like to go crazy on these, but just ignoring them is also kind of shooting yourself in the foot. Um, currently, my favorite high margin prescription is clomastine. It's an antihistamine liquid. It's prescription only. 
Um, we actually use it probably 50% for dermatology and 50% for allergies. Um, all, most of the dermatology conditions like eczema, psoriasis, they all come with an itch component. And many times that itch is what keeps um, patients awake at night. So clomastine helps not only does it kill the itch, but it also causes a little bit of drowsiness. So it's great for those uh, derm patients at night. They love it. They can sleep and they don't have the itch. Um, one that's coming out soon is Coxanto. Um, it's oxaprozin. It's low dose oxaprozin. So those of you that are older like me, you remember oxaprozin. It's a wonderful inset. It's once a day dosing. Like why in the world is anybody still on three or four day dosing of ibuprofen? I don't know. Um, but Coxanto is going to be coming in March. Already the, the pre-test claims that we've done with some of our um, members are fantastic. Um, and you know, and you got to make sure you follow all your rules with that. And we can always have conversations about that. But here's a quick tip to increase profits is go bargain hunting on MatchRx. So create your account with MatchRx. And sometimes you can find some killer deals on there. And these are always from other pharmacies. So you're helping another pharmacy owner out by helping them get rid of inventory. And then you get helped out because you get to save some money. And there's some brand names on there. There's generics. There's all kinds of things on there. So kind of go bargain shopping on MatchRx. And um, usually like in our pharmacy, we usually save about 3000 a month by just sharp shopping on MatchRx. So obviously it varies. We, you know, sometimes um, up and down, but I would say a good average on a monthly basis is saving about 3000 bucks. All right. Last but not least, we said seven tips is leveraging other people's money. All right. So what does that mean? So using other people's money. So like a line of credit, um, get a line of credit before you need one. All right. Um, if you're not in dire straits now and you're like, Hey, I'm actually pretty okay. Things can change very quickly, sometimes completely out of your control. So it's always good to have a line of credit. And so a line of credit is somebody else's money that can kind of come and save you. Um, using credit cards. Um, I'm a big proponent of credit cards if you'll use them wisely and you have some self-control. So what do I mean by wisely? Um, you need to make sure you pay them off. You're just extending basically those due dates. So if you um, have a bill that's due on the, on the 5th, and it'll be late if you don't pay it by the 5th, you could pay it with your credit card, you know, and then the credit card statement closes on the 15th. And then you have until the, you know, the 10th of the next month to pay your credit card bill. So you just got an extra 25 days of payment. Um, it's not meant to charge and then leave it there. All right. If you don't have that discipline, then don't do that. It just extends your payment. So you still want to pay them off. Don't carry high interest balances. Okay. Don't, don't do that. Don't say, oh, well, Lisa told me to get a credit card. Nope, nope, don't carry. Um, now, sometimes you get some specials, like a 0%, uh, you know, and you like transfer, get it for 12 months. Like, if you want to carry a 0% interest for a while, that's fine by me, 0% interest. Um, I highly recommend you go and get the Plum Amex card. So why the Plum Amex card? Plum Amex card is a business-only credit card, and it's 0% interest on all purchases for 60 days, as long as you pay the minimum payment. And the minimum payment is 10% of your balance. So if you put $100,000 on that card, you have 60 days, you have two billing cycles, and it's 0% interest as long as you pay $10,000 you know, each month or 10%. So it is amazing to help with cash flow. Um, I cannot stress it enough. Go get the Plum Amex card. Yes, it's on there twice and that was on purpose. Um, it really can like drastically change. And a bunch of these secondary wholesalers, like I mentioned, like real value, um, you can pay with your credit card. So you pay your bill on the last day. They give you already give you 30 to 45 days. You pay it on the last day and you pay it with your Amex and you have 0% interest for, for another 60 days it can really help you get out some cash crunches. It just offers a ton of flexibility. Another thing that you can do to get some flexibility is what I call a cash flow safety net program. And this is using your accounts receivables. And um, the one that I like the most, there's a lot of predatory programs out there that use accounts receivables that I would not recommend. The type of program that I would recommend um, is Carlos Wheel. Um, we did a webinar with him in December. He's from Capital Solutions. And the reason I like his program is you can sign up with him and you can open this and it's okay if you never use it. You're, there's no fee if you don't use it. A lot of these other programs force you to use them or they charge a high fee for it just sitting there. So this is this is why I call it a safety net. Go open an account with him, go like set everything up. And if you end up never needing it, 
fantastic. You don't need it. And if you end up needing it, it's already there. It's already open. You can withdraw money and you only are charged on whatever you're withdraw, whatever you withdraw. And you have up until like that closing month date. So you can actually withdraw. A lot of people would be like, I just need money for three days. His program is perfect for that. You can withdraw the money, have it for three days. You get your, you know, your big PBM payment and then you pay it back. And you only owe the interest for those three days. Like it's it's the best program out there for like a, a safety net program. So highly recommend that. Even if you think you don't need it, it's it's a great just in case. It's like a life preserver on a boat. You hope you never use it, but if you need to, it's already there. All right, a little bit just more KPIs because you know I love data, and hopefully all of you have a bookkeeper of some point, or some type, or an accountant. So you can ask them to add these because these aren't typically the KPIs that a lot of bookkeepers calculate, but in pharmacy, these are absolutely kind of like must-haves for KPIs. So I like to, it's days of cash on hand, like based on how much cash I have today, how many days can I run my business with the cash that I have? That's basically what this is. Or you can look at it as the opposite. I want to be able to run my business for 15 days. How much cash do I need? So there's kind of, it's the exact same equation, but just different way of looking at it. So um, I recommend keeping a minimum of 15 days of cash on hand. So if you have a running, you know, expense cost of $2,500 a day to run your business, then you would take 2,500 times 15, and that would be the cash that you should aim to keep on hand. Um, higher is more security. You may not need 15 days. There's some people that I know that want more because they just, they have that little like worry gene in them. Some are like, hey, I'm fine if I just have six days, but whatever, whatever works for you, just my recommendation is 15. Um, as you increase that, it just means more security. It means if a check doesn't come, if something doesn't happen with the deposit, you still can keep operating your business because you already have that cash on hand. So here's the equation for that. Um, it's it's pretty simple. Your total cash divided by your daily expenses. And again, you can kind of give this to your accountant and you can work on them with this to really understand. And it's also, you really, it's a measurement of like how healthy your cash flow is um, and how healthy your business is. So um, I wanted to review some member perks. So that's kind of like all the content uh, of there. We'll open up for questions in just a minute. Um, but all of the members, if you're an Essentials, an Unlimited, or of course our Inner Circle member, you get unlimited graphic design requests. That means we can make flyers, bag stuffers, um, door hangers, um, stickers for boxes, you know, whatever you want, we'll design it. So my design team is now your design team. Uh, don't forget about joining office hours, Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Um, add your employees to the membership. Like, let us work with them directly. Let them hear from us. Let them join office hours. Um, they can take that burden off of you. Um, every member, even if you're not a coaching member or, uh, at our unlimited level, you get a call with Mike. We like, especially new members, schedule a call with Mike. He can kind of help point you in the right direction. If you ever get super stuck, like schedule a call with Mike and he can kind of walk you through that. We can also help input your KPIs. So we have a couple of different KPI dashboards inside the membership. We have our three critical KPI, like quick look stoplight. And then we have our full KPI dashboard that, that takes a lot more data and, and crunches a little more KPI numbers. And just, um, we're here to help. Like that's the most important thing. Like if you're struggling, just raise your hand and let us know. Um, you know, we wanna make sure that we're helping you um, in, in any way that we humanly can and um, uh, make sure to, to do that. So um, let's see, Sophia, you raised your hand. Uh, let me click this here. Did you want to ask a question or are you just like high-fiving me? Hi, Lisa, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so I put in a question um, in the chat actually. So am I struggling? I feel... As, as a new owner, I mean, two years in, I still feel fairly new. But yeah, I guess I guess I would say I'm struggling in the sense that I don't know whether I'm making any money. Yes. All right. Yeah. You are not you. I get it. You are not alone, my dear. So that's why we talk about those three critical KPIs. That's going to tell you if you're making money. So it's really important. Like you, you talk. I see your question now. It's like figure out expenses, figure out profit. So um, it's always important to start with those benchmarks. Like, what are your current expenses? What is your payroll? What is your inventory turns? Like, those are the, there's, I actually have a, a, you know, an Excel file with like 200 KPIs. I mean, like you can go on, but 
These are the three most critical. These are the ones that matter the most to you. If and be able to answer that question, like how much money am I making? So one, we, we need to start with the three critical KPI. Um, we can also look at your profit and loss um, statement. And, and with that, do you have an accountant or bookkeeper? So I have an accountant that is my bookkeeper, but okay. I, I, you know, I'm not sure if it's, he's not really like the pharmacy type, I guess you would say. Yep. So that's where it's like, it throws me off. And then when I ask questions, it's very general answers, not specific that I need. So, so the best way to use and leverage a bookkeeper like that, it doesn't necessarily mean, hey, you need to drop him and go get a pharmacy specialty one. But what you can do is hand him what we're saying your KPIs need to be watched. So he knows what a payroll ratio is. That is, a, that is not a pharmacy specific thing. But what he probably doesn't know is what your payroll benchmark should be, because a benchmark for a company, a used car, you know, sales company is going to be very different for a pharmacy. So he doesn't know how to tell you if you're doing good or bad. But if you say, hey, look at this slides from, you know, my pharmacy mentor and our payroll ratio is supposed to be ideally less than 13 and even better if it's less than 11. I want you to calculate my payroll ratio every month and like tell me if I'm doing good or bad. Um, and so that's generally the best way to work with those kind of quote unquote generic bookkeepers and accountants is um, look at what we're saying are the most critical KPIs. And we have the three, the three critical. Those are like absolute. You must focus on these and you must get those to three. Our full KPI dashboard, I think, has eight or nine in there. You know, so you can you can start to broaden it. Once you get those first three to green, you can kind of then broaden it. And so work on those first three first and say, hey, these are the most important and these are the benchmarks that we're going on. Hey, hey, bookkeeper, I want you to tell me where I'm at now. Like, let's back calculate um, for what they are. And then that way we know, hey, these two are actually green. I'm doing OK, but good Lord, this one's red. Like, that's where I need to focus on. And so that's where like that work of improving your business, understanding where you're at now, and then knowing that path to go forward. Um, does that make sense? It, it does. I mean, it, it feels like term, you know, terminology and lingo that I'm not used to. So yes and no, yes and no. Yeah. So, so, and, and, and use us to help. Like we don't mind you know, sending an email to an accountant, like saying, Hey, you know, we work with Sophia, who's one of your accounting clients, you know, she's on this email, she asked us to email you, you know, some information about pharmacy financials, like, we're happy to work with that, those external team, they're part of your team, they're, we're happy to, to work with those external people of your team, um, to be able to inform them, and be able to help you. But it always starts with those three. So, you know, kind of forget about everything else. And you can really put on blinders, and really just learn those three. That's why we have those three courses. So I'd highly recommend, and they're all in the Pharmacy Profit Roadmap. So they're all in the roadmap. You click on the roadmap and you can go through those three courses. That will teach you like everything I know about those, those KPIs. So everything that I know is in there and that will, you will be an expert after that. And just know that for right now to make sure your pharmacy is healthy before we start going to kind of what I call the fun stuff. Cause this is like the boring work. This is like the, um, you know, the, it's the most important work, but frankly, it's kind of boring. Like fixing your payroll ratio isn't exactly the most exciting thing you can do, but it is probably, it's one of the three most important things you can do. So go through those courses and literally you are learning everything that's in my brain about those courses and then leverage our team. We can, we can help your external support system that is helping you with those things, understand where your benchmarks are supposed to be. And then that way they can actually be able to help you as they do your monthly bookkeeping and they do your monthly accounting reports. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, no problem. Um, let's see. Um, Brian mentioned if I have, if I have high interest loans and high credit card debt, any lending companies you can suggest to consolidate? Um, a couple of things there. One, I would first recommend looking at the SBA program. SBA has actually um, started a bunch of new programs. I'm certainly not an SBA expert, um, but I just, just talked with Greco from Live Oak Bank, and he was telling me about all different kinds of programs and how some of them are easier to 
um, get approved for than before. So I would probably start with SBA first. And the reason I say with SBA first is um, um, lower interest rates and lower fees. Like, you know, so like if you can qualify for those, those are going to be the best loans. Um, if you don't qualify for those, there are um, other finance companies. Um, uh, Loan Depot is one, Loan Pal. Um, let me see. I, uh, I have a list here. Let me look. Um, Lightstream. Oh, Lightstream. That was the other one that was on my brain. Lightstream. Light, light, light bulb, light, light stream. Um, a lot of those will do 50 to 100,000 unsecured loans. Like as long as your, your uh, credit is like not completely in the basement, um, you can get some unsecured loans from them. And um, Lightstream has approved just about everybody in like 24 hours. So um, those can be some, some like good non-bank, I mean, they're still banks, but non like, you know, kind of traditional bank loans um, that you could go get. So that's a really good question. Um, let's see, planning to open a pharmacy. Is it a good time now that fellow pharmacists are all saying negative things about profit? It's not like it was before. Um, to your point, <laughs> it is not like it was before. And is it still a good idea? Yes. Um, there's a ton of opportunity and it depends what opportunity you want to go after. So, um, I get a lot of people ask me today, if I were to open a pharmacy today, what would that, what would that look like? Um, so, uh, one, I like compounding cause I'm, that's my background, but I would focus on cash only prescriptions, whether those are retail or compounding, I would take only the most beneficial insurances. So many state Medicaid plans are actually very good. Um, some state local plans like, uh, you know, maybe a local teacher's plan or something like that is very good. Uh, your, uh, like workers comp, I would do workers comp. I would do everything I could to be workers comp. I would do hospice as long as it was direct billing hospice. I wouldn't use any of the, any of the PBMs. Um, I would add a bunch of clinical services because I'm a clinical services, like functional medicine junkie. Um, you know, I would do like foot detox baths and like some other things, red light therapy and those kinds of things. Um, I would definitely do weight loss. I would right now is the time. Like if you have any interest at all in sterile compounding, like that is, that is the way to go. Um, many, many, many pharmacies that are doing sterile compounding, obviously a lot of the GLP ones, you know, they're making two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a month in profit from their prescriptions. Um, and the demand is only going to get higher and there is not enough supply to meet those. So um, I'm, you know, I'm still by pharmacies. We still look at pharmacy opportunities, my partner and I, and, um, but you have to do pharmacy difference. That's the biggest thing. And so uh, to your point, John, that, that asked the question, a lot of the pharmacies that are complaining because it's not like the old days and cash flow is tight, but it's because you're still buying 99% of your drugs from your primary vendor. You're still overpaying for your drugs up front and hoping for a rebate in two, three, six, 12 months. If you switch how you operate your pharmacy to how you should be operating it in 2024, which means very limited purchasing from your primary, you still have a primary, like I still have a primary with one of the big three. Um, just most of my purchases, at least my generics are not from them. I don't chase rebates. Um, and so you purchase most of your products from a secondary, you're going to get the lowest net pricing. So you're not waiting on a rebate. So it means you get to hold your money. Um, you get longer payment terms, which means you get to pay all your other bills before you pay for your drug bill. And it, and it completely changes the way that you look at pharmacy. So if, you know, I always, I, a common thing that I say is stop running your pharmacy. Like it's 1999. It's cause it's not going to work that old traditional way of using a primary purchasing 99% through them um, and, and being okay is just the quickest way to a pharmacy death these days. And it's because of cash flow. Um, though the typical buying group, the typical primary vendor agreements, they have not helped us as independents move with this industry and the, you know, every two week bi-weekly payment terms and overpaying significantly for your generics and dangling some fake brand name carrot in front of you, um, is just a surefire way to die. 
Um, and that's just, that's just the reality of the numbers and the math these days. So yes, I think it's absolutely a fantastic time to open pharmacies. As long as you think about what you want to be doing and what you want to go after and be very strategic. Don't just take anything that walks in just because that's what's walking in. Um, be very mindful of that. So, um, let's see. Uh, let's see. We'll sharing slides. Yes. You can, in the membership, we always record everything and we always put the slides up in there. So yes, um, you can get the slides of the recording and everything. Uh, let's see, GLP-1, a risk though, I fear of FDA and big pharma suing compounding pharmacy. What have you heard? So no, I there there is no risk as long as you follow the rules. So right now, GLP-1s can be compounded. Um, well, there's there's rules you have to meet in order to compound. The big one right now, the rule that is the box that's checked of why GLP ones can be compounded is they're on the shortage list, and every expert out there expects them to be on the shortage list for at least the next 24 months, if not for many many years to come. So they're on the shortage list, and as long as you compound with an ingredient that's part of an FDA approved product. So when you're talking like semaglutide. Um, you guys might have seen out there semaglutide acetate, semaglutide sodium, or semaglutide base. You can only compound with the semaglutide base because that's what's in the FDA approved product. You're not allowed to compound with any of the um, salt forms because none of those are in an FDA approved product. So um, I actually just taught a pe peptide class this past weekend in Idaho with 10 pharmacies, um, all looking to grow this like um, and APCs actually put some really great stuff out there talking about our right to compound. Uh, so there's, there's definitely, and there's long enough runway on this. And I will tell you that the peptide runway is going to be full for decades to come. There will always be something else. Even if semaglutide goes off the shortage list, terzapatide will be there. And if it's not terzapatide, it's the next three, three ones. Like the, the pharma pipeline of peptides is very, very strong. Um, it's very robust. Uh, many of them are, most of them are in phase one, many are phase two, actually, some of them are, are, I think a couple of them are in phase three at this point. And so there's always going to be something else. So even if you have to change your chemical, um, the whole process and everything is still the same. So um, there's a long runway opportunity for this. Uh, so if you're, if that's your thing, if, if maybe doing um, uh, sterile compounding, then I would highly recommend doing it. Uh, let's see. Um, Sophia, your hand was still up. Did you need to, um, did you, uh, have anything else or did you just not put it down or I didn't put it down? <laughs> no, I, I don't need anything else. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll put yours down. And then okay. Brian, yours was still up too. So feel free to, um, chat or talk if you need to, or maybe I just didn't put it down. <laughs> all right. All right. They're both down now. All right. Um, good question. So, yeah, so we're here to help use our team. Our team is now your team. Like, if you need help with KPIs, like we're happy to help you with that. If you need us to help train your employee on to how to help inventory, we're here to do that. So one of the things that we have is we have a daily accountability and implementation call. Now, that does not mean I expect you to hop on the phone every day. You don't have time for that. This is perfect for your employees. So if you're listening to this, you're like, gosh, crap. I have not managed my inventory in like, I don't know how long. I will tell you the average pharmacy, so average, not the worst, not the best, the average pharmacy has $50,000 of excess inventory on, on your shelf, 50,000 bucks. That's 50,000 that could be in your bank account. And so if you're like, hey, I wanna assign somebody to do inventory and I don't have time to micromanage them, perfect. Get them their login to the membership, we'll help point them in the right direction of that course, they'll go through the course, they can join our daily implementation calls, which are at 2 p.m. Central. They can hop on if they have any questions. If they don't have any questions, they don't have to hop on. It's a it's a as as needed type of thing. Um, we can help them through that, and we can help support that team member getting the stuff done. So um, that's that's what we have daily implementation calls. Um, usually, our uh, amazing pharmacy coach Mike is on there. Um, so um, usually, they'll be getting that same person every every time, but. You know, Mike sometimes uh, has a day off or something, but we'll always have somebody there from the Diverse Fire X team on to be there for those daily implementation calls. So we're here to help, like truly, truly help in any way that we can um, to help you get to that that finish line, you know, because it's not enough just having an idea. You need to actually like go do the thing. So, you know, Sophia, you were talking about your, you know, bookkeepers and financials and this and that, like 
we're we're here to help. We can review financials. We can talk to your accountants. We can, you know, help you to understand. It is a different language. It's, I mean, accounting is a whole different language, just like pharmacy. Like we have all our lingos, all of our acronyms, um, you know, so does accounting. And so um, it's really important that, so we're here to help and leverage us there. I think that's just the most important. So in closing, I want to remind you of that free summit ticket offer from Real Value. Um, and the, how you get that is just email our wonderful uh, Jew. Um, our assistant at diversifyrx.com, just include the name and email of the attendee. So you're like Lisa Fost, Lisa Fost at gmail.com. Um, and uh, that's it. That's all you need to do to grab the free ticket. Um, I just ask that if you grab a free ticket that you, you know, have plan on coming. And if you can't come, you, you let us, let us know. And this is good for additional attendees or like new tickets only. So like if you already bought one or something like that, um, the, this will be good to help send somebody else. So um, any last final questions? I know that was a ton of information. That's like three years of MBA financial class for pharmacies in like an hour. <laughs> so feel free. You can watch the replay. You can watch the review and um, everything. So thank you, Brian. I'm glad it was worth your time. Um, I, it's what I always hope. I always hope that spending time with me is worthwhile to you. I know how short time is. So I'm glad that it was, it was good. Thank you, George. Uh, I see that. So, all right. Um, I will stay on for just 30 more seconds. If there's anything else, if anybody has any questions, anything else like cash, you know, outside of cash flow, I'm happy to to chat and answer any questions. Feel free to, to post them up. Alrighty, I don't see anything coming up, so I will let you go. And uh, if you have a question later, again, that community chat, feel free to post a question in there. If you have something private, you wanna keep you know private, then send it to the contact us and that comes directly to the team, the internal team, and we're happy to help and get those questions answered for you. So, all right, everybody, adios, goodbye, and thanks for coming and thanks for joining. And I can't wait to hear about all the changes and successes that you're gonna be able to make. So, bye-bye.